So you came to check out some Easter eggs in Red Dead Redemption 2. Well, today we've got 20 of them. This is going to be part one of a Red Dead Redemption 2 Easter egg guide because as we find more Easter eggs in the game, I'm going to compile all of them into one video. Now, I've done a few things to help y'all out with these Easter eggs. The first is the way this list is organized is the Easter eggs are categorized by which state they are in. That way, I don't show you one on one side of the map and then the next one on the complete other side of the map. So if you want to check all of these out, they are organized for you and you can also find timestamps to those in the description. So if y'all enjoy, hopefully I can earn your like on this video and also a subscription would be very awesome as well. Number 20, The Witch Cauldron. This can be found in Northern Amberino, and up in the woods, by itself, very secluded, is this little hideout. And inside of here is uh, some books, a chest, and a cauldron sitting under a fire. And it has a mysterious drink in it. And if you actually take a drink of this cauldron, yes, you can interact with it. Arthur is going to black out, and he's going to wake up outside of this hideout. He's going to be just a few feet away. Uh, just by himself. He, he passed out from whatever is in this mysterious cauldron. Number 19, how to talk to Bigfoot. This one is really cool. So before actually doing this and triggering this Easter egg, what you need to do is have discovered at least a bare minimum of 30 animals. And by discovering animals, I mean going up to them and either holding R1 or RB to discover them and to add them to your compendium. Once you do that, you're going to need to head to this location in Northern Amberino and you're going to see some strange birds in the air. And you need to follow them around and they're going to lead you to this cave with a giant rock in front of it and you hear a voice inside. And it's a man who describes himself as being very big. That's why he's locked away and he's very lonely. And there's two different dialogues for this. One is when you first come across it. And the next one, you have to come back three in-game days later. And you will hear this Bigfoot dialogue. How are you? I'm rather lonely. You see, I'm too big. I haven't got any friends because I'm too big. Is that so? Yes. Yes, it is so. That's sort of why I said it. That, and because I was lonely and wanted to talk. Maybe we could be friends. I've always wanted a real friend. Someone to discuss the human condition with, you know? Uh, I don't know much about that. Neither do I. Be well, friend. Be well. Nice to see you again. And you. How have you been? Okay, I suppose. That's good. I've been lonely. Very lonely. I'm faced with a stark and unpleasant choice. Be lonely or get murdered. Not very exciting as it goes. Huh. Uh, I suppose pick lonely? Did you miss me? Uh, I suppose so. Yes, I missed you, too. I've been quite lonely out here. One day, I long to have a wife. But women can be so... cruel. Nobody wants large children. They eat too much. It's very sad. Number 18, a robot in 1899. This one is really cool. And to actually do this and trigger the Easter egg, what you need to do is actually complete the Marco Dragic side missions before this will trigger. This will not spawn unless you do that. I have confirmed this and I have tried this out. Now, if y'all want a walkthrough of the Marco Dragic side missions and how to unlock the robot, check out Tony Strong Style. He has an amazing guide on his channel and I'll leave a link down below in the description. But this robot is really cool. Once you actually complete the side quest for Marco Dragic, 
he's going to appear atop a mountain in northern Amberino. And like I said before, he will not spawn before you complete the side quests for Marco Dragic. Number 17, a frozen couple. This one is in the mountain range in northern Amberino once again, and this one is kind of sad. We actually come across a couple and their camp, and uh, their camp is barren. There are no supplies. It seems like they, they ran out of supplies, had no way to leave because their horse is also here, frozen to death and dead. And uh, we can actually pull a drawing out of their hands, and it's just a panoramic of where they are. But this is just sad that this couple died in each other's arms. Number 16, we've got some woolly mammoth bones hidden deep in the mountains in northern Amberino. And I really like this one. It's cool finding the fossils in the game and the fact that there is a woolly freaking mammoth. This would have been one of the last things that I would have expected. But once again, in northern Amberino, you can just come across the skeletons and fossils of a woolly mammoth that died presumably thousands of years ago. Number 15 and number 14 are going to be combined here. We have La Llorona and Night Zombies. And in Mexican folklore, La Llorona is the ghost of a woman who lost her children and she now cries along the banks of a river. And to the people who come across her, well, she usually causes them misfortune. And that's exactly what happens in this game. Once you come across this woman crying in the marsh, she's wearing all white just like La Llorona. Well, we try to help her out, and she pulls out a knife and tries to cut us and takes off running, and she looks very, very creepy. After doing so, some night zombies, or these guys who look like zombies, will also come out of nowhere very quickly and attempt to kill you. Once taking those out, you can still chase down La Llorona, and you can take her out, and if you take a look at her body, well, she looks obviously dead and very decomposed, but also very, very scary. Number 13, a tiny church. So uh, deep inside Lemoyne, there is a church in the middle of some woods, and it is a tiny church for apparently tiny people that either appear in the game or do not appear in the game. But nonetheless, this is a nice little gag here. It's funny just coming across this small church for a small congregation in the middle of the woods in Red Dead Redemption 2. Number 12, a giant snake. To me, this actually resembles Ka from the Jungle Book, but nonetheless, it's just a giant, very vibrant snake hanging in a tree. And talk about sending chills down your spine coming across this giant snake. Number 11, the outhouse girl. We actually come across this outhouse that's chained up and inside we find this girl, and she has obviously lost her mind or never had one to begin with. Uh, she starts counting one, two, three, seven, four. She doesn't know how to count. She's insane, and also she has ripped the hair off the top of her head. So she went to the barber and said, hey, give me that Dr. Phil haircut. But nonetheless, uh, we've got this just insane girl in an outhouse and I'm not sure what this is a reference to I know back in the days that Red Dead Redemption 2 took place people like this were not treated kindly so her family presumably just locked her away Two, three, seven, six, four. 
four, five, eleven, two, uh, one, two, ten, three, five, eight, thirteen, four, one, two, three. Number 10, the well prisoner. We actually could come across a water well in the game, and if you climb down the ladder and go inside, not only can you find a bunch of coins, but you can actually find some tally marks engraved into the side of this water well, meaning that at one point, there was probably a prisoner down here, and these tally marks were the number of days that he was down there. There's also some drawings of clouds and a sun. Number nine, a clan meeting. In a clearing in the middle of a wooded area in the middle of the night, we can actually come across the clan gathering to burn a cross. And this is actually very comical because while attempting to light the cross on fire, one of the clan members actually catches his highly flammable robes on fire and uh, everybody starts freaking out, scattering, and this guy just burns up while everybody else leaves him. Number eight, man, bear, pig. In an abandoned house that is boarded up and locked, we can actually find man, bear, pig. And what you have to do is actually climb onto the roof and go through a window. And we see this giant thing that is put together with a combination of, of a pig head, a, a bear body, arms, legs, claws, different things like this. And we can find notes scattered around this room just telling us what is used to put this thing together and I'm just gonna say it's the man bear pig because that's what it seems like but this is just very creepy that this house is all boarded up locked up but climbing through a window this is what we can discover I wonder who put this thing together number seven a reference to Bonnie McFarlane from Red Dead Redemption 1 and this one is very nice a nice little subtle nod to Bonnie we can actually come across a man who seems to be dead once we come up on him he has a letter in his hand he jumps up gives us the letter then he dies for real this time and we can actually read this letter and it's a reference to Miss Bonnie McFarlane from Red Dead Redemption 1 Number six, Meteor House. This is a house that was struck by a meteor. We know this because once we walk inside, there is a hole in the floor. There is dismembered bodies everywhere from the meteor, and there is a hole in the roof. Number five, UFO number one. Found in an abandoned shack at 2 a.m., we not only have an Easter egg in reference to the Heaven's Gate cult, a real-life cult that all committed suicide on bunk beds, while wearing matching Nike shoes. And that's what these bodies in this shack are doing. They're all wearing matching shoes. They're not Nikes, but they committed suicide believing that a higher being would take their souls and they would, uh, they would come back when the time was right. And we find all of this mysterious stuff in this shack. And at 2 in the morning or 2 a.m., a UFO will spawn and fly above us for around two hours before flying up into the air and disappearing. Number four, UFO number two. On top of Mount Shan at 2 a.m., we can actually find a second UFO. This one is a bit smaller, and it just hovers around for a little bit. And once again, just like the first UFO, after a while, it flies up into the air and disappears. Number three, Bigfoot Bones. Here we have the second Bigfoot reference in the game, and this is presumably Bigfoot Bones at least, because it's the skeleton of either Sasquatch or or a very giant man. This can be found tucked away just under a little area on the mountain. And the most notable feature about this giant skeleton is not only the giant bones, but also the fact that it has some dark brown hair or fur on the top of its head.
Number two, a gorilla. Yes, there is an actual gorilla in Red Dead Redemption 2, but it's not alive. It's either a gorilla statue or it's a stuffed gorilla. And we can find this just in a ravine and it was inside a crate and the crate is broken. So it probably fell off the back of a stagecoach or some sort of trailer. I would expect it to be on a train, but there's not any really railroad tracks above or nearby this. So for this thing to travel that far would be impossible. But nonetheless, we have a gorilla. Number one, a crashed airplane. Red Dead Redemption 2 takes place three years before the first ever airplane was flown. So at this time, everybody was trying to fly and make airplanes. And this is obviously a failed attempt here as at the base of a cliff, we've got this glider or this airplane or this flying machine, as Arthur calls it, with a dead pilot inside and broken off wings. Hopefully y'all enjoyed these 20 Red Dead Redemption 2 Easter eggs. If so, hopefully I earned your like. A thumbs up is greatly appreciated. And also be sure to subscribe for more Red Dead Redemption 2 guides, Easter eggs, secrets, and things like that on the channel. And with that said, I'm Zach Cox. Thank y'all for tuning in. Hopefully you did enjoy. And until next time, I hope to see you in the next video.